Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mitch Greenberg. I'd like to put on a half hour stand up comedy show for you. I hope you will like my performance. <laughs> so here I stand before you, a 66 year old guy. I'm married 43 years. Got up for got up for work today, put on my shirt, my button fell off. I to pick up my briefcase, my handle fell off. Now I'm afraid of putting my clothes on. <laughs> Let us talk about something interesting. I had cataract surgery done recently. Didn't go that good. I, I don't know. I can't see very well now. And I paid a lot of money and it, it's just not working. Maybe I should take them off. Well, now I can see. <laughs> now, I tried cooking when I was younger in life. Not good. My father-in-law once came over to the house. We made eggs. He says to me, these eggs don't taste too good. I said, no, they don't. He says, did you put too much butter in the eggs? I said, am I supposed to put butter in the eggs? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no wonder why they don't taste good. My wife came home, she threw a frying pan out. <laughs> I called a lady neighbor one time of mine, and I asked her, can you tell me how to boil water? She said, excuse me, boil water? I said, are you serious? I said, do I look like I'm kidding? So she says, put the water on real warm, and when the bubbles come up, it's boiling. Oh, good, I'm learning how to cook. <laughs> Now, one of my daughters did me a real favor. She laid on my wife's nerve with three minutes, to, three minutes, three months to go in her pregnancy. Now, I'm the Mr. Mom and chef of the future in the house. That is not good. So now, my wife and I are both sick one time, and she makes this chicken soup. That's Jewish penicillin, by the way, if you're sick. So, we're eating the chicken soup, and my wife said, this doesn't taste too good. I said, no, it don't. She says, did you drain the noodles? I said, did I what? Did you drain the noodles? Oh, you got to do that? <laughs> so now we're having water and noodles. Oh, God. Where did chicken My last attempt to cook, I tried french fries. This look easy is enough. No, I burnt them so bad you need an ax to cut them. <laughs> but I finally figured it out. I took a healthy choice meal, I popped it in the microwave three minutes, took it out, there it is. Why did I think of that 10, 20 years ago? Now my brothers and I, we had some funny things happen in our life. My oldest brother was a sleepwalker. And we shared three beds in one bedroom. <clears throat> and one day he has a bad nightmare and my brothers and I, my other brother and I, we hid under the bed, we were scared. So he's running around like this for 10 minutes. <laughs> my brother and I are scared. We hid under the bed for our life. But my dad was the hero of the day. He got out, slapped his face, threw water in his face. Everything was fine, except my brother and I were still shaking in our pants. Now later in life, we had a wholesale drug company years ago. And we used to sell stuff that Walgreens does to drug stores. So I was... A young kid, 125 pounds back then, boy, I wish. And I'd be on top of the office area, and I would get empty boxes, fling them down so we could pack the orders for the stores to deliver them. One day, I fell through the ceiling. I landed feet first on my brother's desk, and the first thing he says, Sir, can you please hold on? My brother just dropped in to say hello. <laughs> then, a few months later, my sister-in-law is pregnant with their first child. She's in about her eighth month, you know. And he decides to talk in his sleep. But what does he do? He is typing, typing a label of a prescription on her stomach while she's pregnant. Valium, five milligram, 100. Now if I knew that back then, I want some of those. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. Now my oldest brother, he flunked Spanish in high school five times. That's pretty hard to do. Five times he failed Spanish. He finally graduated in a restaurant in Chicago. And I thought to myself, he could probably teach the class and not go to college. He's no, he's, no, he's flunked it enough, you know? Now me, I accidentally punched my mother in the nose one time. 
That wasn't pleasant. That was an 11-year-old Jewish kid from Chicago, spoiled. Big softball game. Mark, can I go? No, you can't. Mark, can I go? No, you can't. And I went like this. She moved the hand and punched her right in the nose. Then what I did, what any other 11-year-old kid would do, I ran for my life. <laughs> I got on my bike. I pedaled as fast as I could. And I, you know, I wasn't a Babe Ruth when I played baseball. But today I was a hero. I had a home run with the bases loaded in the last inning to win the game, 50 feet off the score wall. I got mobbed at home plate, mostly by the girls. That felt pretty good. <laughs> then I went home, and I don't want to tell you what happened when I got home. Now my oldest, older brother had a 50th uh, anniversary party. It was a uh, roast, a comedy roast. So he wants a great grandchild in a worse way. So his grandchildren, the girls, put pillows under their under their blouses like they're pregnant. I got up there, I looked at my brother, I said, I don't need no stinking pillows. I am pregnant. Oh. I'm in my 14th month. I'm dilated at 18. I've been in labor three months. And I got two boys in here. And I'm going to name them Patrick and Jonathan. They might play hockey one day. They might even play for the Blackhawks. Hey, Blackhawks. <laughs> they might have brown eyes. And the doctor says, I have no idea how these kids are coming out. I said, you know what? <laughs> so, I was in the Army, 1966, drafted. I had a choice, going for two years and be Uncle Sam's boy, or going to jail for three years. I figured, well, it can't be that bad. So my dad handsomely paid off a doctor to get me out of medical discharge. The day of induction, the doctor is AWOL, absent without leave. So I'm giving the story to the two doctors. They think I'm nuts. I raise my hand. I took the oath. I called my dad. What do I do now? He says, I'll see you in two years. <laughs> <laughs> so now Uncle Sam owns me. Here I am, a spoiled Jewish kid, 19 years old, irresponsible, late for everything, and out of shape. What do they want me for? I'm not going to help us. <laughs> so we got a whole barracks full of Illinois, Indiana guys in Fort Polk, Louisiana. That is not good combination. <laughs> 4.30 in the morning, the guy comes in, first call, first call, banging on the trash can. I say, get out of bed, it's 4.30 in the morning, are you crazy? <laughs> 30 seconds later, my back hurts a lot because the bed I'm laying in was turned over with me in it. <laughs> I got the message. The next day, he comes in with the trash can, the bending. First call, I'm the first one out of bed. I'm the first one to the mess hall to eat. I'm the first one, you know, to go out for rugby to see if I'm present and accounted for. I got the message. Now, I got to do some things I've never done before. I'm only 19 years old. I got to make my own bed. What? I got to throw a quarter up to bounce up and down. Now they want me to shine my boots and shine my belt buckle, which I can't see. Somewhere down there. They want me to do my laundry. What are they trying to do? Make me responsible? So here I am. I'm trying to figure everything out. I got my M14 weapon, my friend. Don't worry, it's not loaded. So. We're doing physical training, and my arms are getting tired. One, two, three, one, two, three, bam, I hit myself in the head with the weapon. <laughs> Sergeant comes over to me, Greenberg, that he go to Greenberg. to punch him in the mouth of myself today. Did you, hurt, <laughs> did you hurt the weapon? I said, no, I'm bleeding like a pig. So I go to the hospital, and the lady gives me a form to fill out, reason for injury, hit himself overhead with weapon. Wait, well, that's pretty funny, Greenberg. You're not getting a medical discharge. I said, who's asking for a medical discharge? <laughs> I asked you what I did. You know, that's what I did. You see the people in the white suits? I said, I don't know. Maybe down the road. <laughs> but you know what? I, I did okay. I got an honorable discharge. I got two stripes. I was a corporal. And all of a sudden, we're coming home from Germany, and we're going to New Jersey. There's about 10 of us on a commercial flight over the Atlantic Ocean. So we get a call about an hour before we get to the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. 
We have to make an emergency landing in Newfoundland, Canada. One of our engines are blown. <laughs> so I'm a nice Jewish boy. I put on my yarmulke and I say the following: Miskada, Miskada, Shemay Rabba, Amen. What is that? Well, that's basically the prayer for the dead in Hebrew. So she says, "We'll make it. Don't worry about it." Okay. So I said, you know what, lady? I don't want to be a meal for any sharks or whales in the ocean here. What good is a life jacket? I want to live. You know, we'll make it. By the time we got to Newfoundland, Canada, I had a Cuban, Mexican, Chinese, Japanese, Russian, Muslim, African American. They learned a prayer in Hebrew. It's amazing how you can learn a foreign language when your life's at stake. So finally, we got we saw the Statue of Liberty, New York. We're all excited, you know. And we're, we're coming home now, and, and we're in New Jersey, we get off the plane, and the ground is like muddy, and it's raining and everything, and we didn't care, we kissed the ground, you know? So we're at this processing center, and all of a sudden the guy says, 10 minutes, you come back, you go to the snack shop, have some coffee and food, you come back, and we'll give you your flight tickets from Philly to O'Hare, you'll be out of the army a free man. So. I said, okay, so I'm going to snack shop. And there's this guy, couldn't been in the army more than two weeks, Ben Johnson, never forget his name. He was my height and weight. If a fight erupts, I got a chance. He gets up, and what does he do? He salutes me. He thinks I'm an officer. <laughs> so I said, we can have some fun here for a few minutes. I says, hey, your boots and belt buckle are dirty. Sorry, sir. You need a shave and a haircut. Sorry, sir. You didn't peel all the potatoes. Sorry, sir. Get the leading rest position. Now, I'm not going to do that because if I do, I'll open up. <laughs> it's a start of a push up, and then you come up and stay there. That's painful. So come back in five minutes, and I'll see how you're doing. So I come back in five minutes. His face looked like a rainbow. It wasn't just red. Get up. Yes, sir. Get up. Yes, sir. I'm not an officer. See this building there? Yeah. Well, I'm going to process out, and I'm going to be a civilian in two hours. Have a nice two years, buddy. He laughed. I'm lucky there. <laughs> that was my army experience. Now, we've had a lot of rain in Gurney lately. And the other day, I was in Grand Avenue. I swore I saw animals in pairs with a guy with a gray beard. I'm looking for an ark. <laughs> Could it have been that bad? Maybe I'm imagining. Now, my grandson's school, there was so much water there, I'd never seen this before. They were fishing on the weekends. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Now speaking about my grandson, I love him to death. He comes over to my, my house every morning, 7, 7, 30. I give him his medication. We get breakfast. He's on his way to school. One day he comes 6.30 in the morning. It's so early, I took his medication. <laughs> so I said, how am I going to feel? He said, numb. I said, ooh, that could be good. 3.30 in the afternoon, he calls me. He says, Grandpa, how do you feel? I said, buzzed. I said, you know what? I think we're going to have to call the doctor. Maybe we can share every morning. <laughs> now, my grandson doesn't like blood drawn from him. He don't like shots given to him. None of us do either to lie. So we're in the emergency room. And with the nurses and the doctor, the first words out of his mouth in the bed, you have on demand. I said, this is not a movie theater. This is direct TV, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so they put him in a child straitjacket. <laughs> a child straitjacket. <laughs> His arm is leaning loose, and there's three nurses taking a shot of needle and drawing his blood. I've never seen nothing like it in my life. <laughs> my other two grandsons, they went to Wisconsin Dells for a weekend, and we watched their two miniature schnauzers. They loved them, played with them, fed them, slept with them. She comes home Sunday night, how did it go? Um, never do this again. I said, what? Um, never do this again. Your grandchildren. Now they're mine, they're no longer hers. <laughs> I just didn't hear them. What happened? Well, your older one, he was he wouldn't be quiet, he wouldn't behave, he was crazy. And the little guy, your other grandson, and they're mine, they're not hers, <laughs> he said, he wouldn't take a nap, he was crabby. Never do this again, never do this again. She's walking away and my wife's in the kitchen and I'm going like this, thumbs up, and she's, are you laughing at me? <laughs> uh, no, Dad? Yeah, actually, I am. You think this is funny? I said, actually, yeah. I took you and your sisters to Wisconsin Dell when you were little. How does it feel, huh? 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 <laughs> now, hospitals. 
between Pactel, Lake Forest, Highland Park, and Cedar Mall. You need a GPS like you've got in the cars to find anything. Elevator A, B, C, one, two, three, <laughs> left, down, right, side to side, I don't know. And you ask the people that work there, you know where the cafeteria is? No. You know where the, you know where the urgent care is? No. You know where the emergency room is? No. Do you guys work here? Yeah. Oh, really? That's nice. I was on the elevator the other day. There was a little five-year-old kid there with his parents and the parents are, you know, is there any cute little kid? I said, yeah, and there's a guy my age standing next to me. The little kid says, the parent says, I said, look at him. I said, you know what? Look me up in 10 years. Here's my card. Let me know how your son is going to be in 10 years. What do you mean by that? Ask this guy to my left. Oh, yeah, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> now, the other day, my wife got out of the hospital, and I forgot my sunglasses. So I went up to the room to get it. I looked at five nurses, and I says, I don't know if I'm Roy Orbison, Stevie Wonder, or Ray Charles. <laughs> well, my wife's had a lot of practice all lately. She's had so much juice, she's had more than A-Rod, Sosa, and McGuire had combined. That's a lot of steroids. Now, speaking about baseball, Pete Rose. This idiot got thrown out of baseball because of gambling. Can you imagine a commissioner coming up saying, Pete, we're going to give you a break, bu uh, a break, buddy. We're going to put you in the Hall of Fame, maybe. And the idiot will probably say, what's my odds? <laughs> I went by a drug rehab center the other day. I saw a sign on the lawn, please keep off the grass. That would work. <laughs> now, don't worry, hold on. No clothes are coming off or improvising. I went for my first rectal exam. Oh. Guy said, bang down. So I bent down. Oh my God, I saw God. <laughs> and I saw heaven. It's beautiful. And I saw my parents. They said hi. And I saw my grandparents. They said hi. And I saw the whole universe. It's big. It's beautiful. Beautiful stars up there. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Lucille Ball, Phyllis Diller, beautiful stars. And then I saw the planet Uranus. Amen. <laughs> now, sometimes I go to McDonald's, you know, and I see these people, three, four hundred pounds. I like a quarter pounder with cheese, everything on it. Large order fries and a Diet Coke. Diet Coke, where does that come from? <laughs> when do you need a Diet Coke? Is it really going to help you? <laughs> That's a cue for my wife. Anyways, I went to McDonald's one day. You didn't speak too good English. Could I help you? I went to my toilet. I went to my toilet. I don't understand what you said. Ah, son. I still don't understand what you said. Ah, son! I went to my apartment with cheese, swat on flesh, swat drink, swat on dish. So I asked him, do you understand English? I still don't understand what you said. I got the food. Then I go to Joe's food store a lot. And one day when I went to Joe, I saw something really weird. Christmas time. The lady stopped at the stop sign, gave me the right away, and let me cross the street. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Christmas time around here? You gotta walk for your life. They don't care about you. Okay? Now, I've seen people, they stop, they give you a look. All right, come on, I dare you. Come on, come on, I dare you. Or they'll stop halfway, like me. They'll look to the left, right, down. Cell phone, texting. I mean, you gotta walk at your own risk around here. <laughs> Stop signs. The other day was a jewel. I got some bagels for my wife, right? And we were parked in handicap. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm going in the car, and this lady is loading her groceries in the trunk. I'm in the wrong car. The lady says, excuse me, can I help you? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong car. I was only one lane off. So my wife is in the car laughing, finally. 
Oh, and this guy's parked next to me. He says, Sir, do you need help? I said, Oh, man, do I need help. <laughs> you know, the next time you call for the suits, we're ready to go, baby. Now, I remember, I remember, I remember one time, I always have the handicap plates on. I'm not handicapped. My wife is. Do I take advantage of it? Sure. <laughs> Plus walking to help my babies here, right? So, and I get dirty looks from these people. This guy in handicap, this guy in it. You know, they're upset. They're going nuts. One day, a poor guy in his mid-80s, I thought his life was getting in. He's, oh, he's not handicapped. The guy's almost in tears. So, I made to make him feel good, I did my impression of Chester from Gunsmoke. Mr. Dillon? Oh, Mr. Dillon? Oh, Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon? Got cracked up. <clears throat> you know, my wife never laughs at my jokes. The only time she laughs at me when I take my clothes off to take a shower. <laughs> I don't want to tell you what I tell her when she takes your clothes off to take a shower. That's, that's not going to be on the air. And we go to stores sometimes. And she tells me, you can't go in this store. I said, why? No dogs allowed. I said, <laughs> but she can't hear. It's ridiculous. I mean, one time, I says, I finished our grandson's eggs this morning, right? She says, what did you do to your rectum? I said, what? <laughs> Another good one. We're watching a movie one time. Well, my grandson, this boy, this crime our picture, I think they went out of business. Her, her response, this is a closed caption. I said, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? One time I'm on, I'm on with the urologist. She says, don't forget when you're on with the maids, tell them Thursday or Friday. I said, maids? I'm <laughs> called my urologist. Are you in your mind? It's not even close. <laughs> and then one time, I called her in the hospital. They give you medications. She says, no, the doctor hasn't come in yet. That's an ask about the doctor. <laughs> what do you call this? If you weren't so cheap, I wouldn't have hearing aids that are 25 years old that don't work. And I wouldn't talk because you don't hear so I think that either, buddy. Oh, shut up and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> you know, it reminds me of a joke. These two people, in, I tell jokes sometimes around if you guys don't know. Okay, well, these two people in the rainies, they went to the doctor, right? And the, the wife is sitting in the waiting room Packed, packed, the whole, you know, a lot of people in the waiting room. And the husband goes up to the doctor and says, yeah, I'm here, I'm Jones, I'm here for my appointment. The doctor says, you have intercourse. He says, what? I don't know. He goes to the waiting room, he says, full people, honey, do we have intercourse? I told you Blue Cross and Blue Shield, you dummy. <laughs> Blue Cross, Blue Shield, I gotta remember that. Oh. I've had cars in my life, and I'll tell you what, I can't take them with the cars. These gas prices are insane over here. They, they really are. I mean, they're nuts. There's no more gas, there's no more prices. They still got the three grains of gas, and I don't like in first quarter. That's your prices. But I showed them. I got my Social Security check once a month. I threw it right into my debit card. I filled up my car. I felt like a million dollars. The only problem is my whole check went in a pump. <laughs> they got me going nuts around here. 10 miles an hour in a parking lot, five miles an hour downstairs. <laughs> going out of my mind. You know, I'm like Inga Knievel when I drive, you know? <laughs> my kids think there's something wrong with me. <gasps> they said, Dad, you're only going 15 or 40. I said, Jesus, I must be going crazy. I'm paranoid. <laughs> I get lost lots of time when I drive. <laughs> One time we're coming back from Tennessee. We're somewhere in Kentucky and I'm trying to find I-57 to head east, right? I'm lost. I see this guy pulled over and he's in an SUV. I say, buddy, I'm lost. So am I. I said, good, we got something coming. <laughs> I'm trying to go to Illinois. So am I. Oh, we're doing good. I got a map. I said, now we're cooking. <laughs> I found my way to I-57, bingo, I'm on my way home. There's only one problem. This idiot two lights before I-57 turned left, he got lost. So I see him 20 miles up on 57, he screamed at the top of his lungs, and he screams from his, S his car, and he says, hey, I found I-57, that's where you should have, dummy, you had the map. <laughs> now I've had problems with cars all my life. You know, hoods, 
They, they don't go good with me. I had a silver station wagon one time, and my hood broke. So what do I do? I go from Wheeling, Illinois to Bensonville, Illinois to get a, a used hood in a junkyard. It's red, close enough. Okay, it's silver, red, close. Next day I open the hood. I went to put windshield salmon in there. I went to close it. It doesn't close. <laughs> now I gotta drive from Wheeling back to Bensonville with a red hood staring at me in my face for a half hour, trying to on for size. Ten minutes into the drive, hey buddy, your hood's up. I said, really? I didn't know that, thanks. <laughs> Ten minutes later, hey buddy, your hood's up. I said, yes, yeah, I'm red too. <laughs> then I'm almost there. And the guy, the cop said, sir, your hood's up. I said, sir, you're about the officer, about the hundredth person that told me that already. I said, I've been driving for 30 minutes not knowing who's not in front of me and looking at a two mirrors. It's a miracle I'm alive. The cop cracked up. <laughs> now, another car story. I had a white Toyota Corolla. I bumped a guy on Route 41. We settled, no big deal, no cops. Took the car to mechanic, he fixed the hood, I thought. Two months later, I'm driving a ride to the road, and I'm heading south, and all of a sudden, the hood jumps up and hits the windshield. <laughs> and I looked up and I said, is this an omen? Is this Final Destination, a new movie? I hope not. So I can go boy, I shut the hood, I'm on my way. Whoa! I get to I get to Route 41, the hood completely blows off the car. <laughs> can you imagine driving your car with your hood blowing off the car? Unreal. Now I'm facing south on 41, not north. I gotta go to my mechanic. Now the, the trunk is in the left lane, okay? Blocking traffic. And I got no hood. So I'd be a nice guy, I'm looking at a million cars going south towards Chicago. And all of a sudden, I figure I'll be a good guy, I'll get out of the car, and I'll get the hood. Wrong, I took two steps, the light turned green, I looked up, I said, no, not a good idea. <laughs> now, can you imagine being a teacher, and you have parents tell you, you know, it must be nice working 8 to 3.30 every day, and you get the summers off, and I slap in their face. They don't know what they go through with kids. I'm telling you, if I was a teacher, I'd take a needle and inject it right here in my veins. So I'd have caffeine all day. It'd be beautiful. I would, nothing would bother me. <laughs> Better yet, let's take some Ritalin and put it in liquid form. Okay? Now, the kids can go into slides. They can go into swing sets. They'll come in. They'll be mellow. They'll listen. They'll say, thank you. You're welcome. They'll be nice. That's a teacher's deal there, huh? You ever at a wedding? You ever at a wedding? Don't ever kiss the bride more than five seconds. That's not a good idea. If you're at a movie show, and it's a film, don't scream at the actors and actresses. They can't hear you, dummy. <laughs> if you're at a two-way stop sign, okay, and all of a sudden, you stop first. Now, you know what? Let the guy go first. His tires are twice your size. Let him go first. <laughs> How about some emails that are crazy? I'll tell you, I got some emails. I'll be out of the office for two weeks, and I'll be getting my brain and heart taken out so I can be part of the management team. I'll be out of the office for two weeks, and any stupid moronic emails will be deleted in the order they were received when I return. And this is a good one. I will return in four, four weeks for major medical services. When I return, please call me Loretta. I'm no longer Steve. <laughs> Now I'd like to give you a tribute to the late great Rodney Danger Tale. I'll tell you what I had. I was born. The doctors went to my parents, did everything we could, but he pulled through. I'll tell you. My brother and so they were born. The doctors slapped my mother. High school was no better. First three years of high school, every girl asked God, so no. One finally said, yes, I got so confused, I asked her to take it over. <laughs> finally, she knew her sweetheart, honey, love of my life. She calls me Saturday night, honey, come on over to the house, nobody's home. Went to the house, nobody's home. <laughs> Went to an orange juice store, but he had to quit the job. Was, I couldn't concentrate. I was once a history teacher. I had to quit the job. I didn't see any future in it. Went to the doctor. I had to come practice. I didn't have any patients. See, we're an ophthalmologist. I had to quit that too. I couldn't see eye to eye with the patients. I wonder why with these things on. Finally retired. The best job I ever had. Now I can tell you how to live life backwards. First you start out dead. Get that out of the way. Then what you do is you live in a nursing home. You can't take care of yourself. Then. 
what you do is <clears throat> you look at Social Security and Medicare with your retirement. Then what you do is on the last day of work you get a gold watch. Then you go to college and you get a degree and become a doctor. Then what you do is you go to high school and probably have the time of your life. Then you go back to elementary school and play all day with no responsibility. And finally, the last nine months of your life, you live in spotlight heating conditions, room service on tap, all the food and drink you want. You finish your life off as an orgasm. All right. My name is Mitch Greenberg. Thank you very much. Yeah.